All right. On your sheet of notes, be on the side that has kind of the border around it and, you know, the one that I, the way I handed it out. On there, I would say that there's five different pictures, right? Five different options is what they're making it look like. I disagree. I think pretty much there are three options. They've just tried to make it look like there's five. Okay. As you take a look right here, I would think that segment MT, how could you describe segment MT in the first picture that you have? How would you describe it? It's hitting the circle once, so it's called an, a tangent, yes. Now, is segment, say, PR, is that a tangent? No, it's not. And in fact, seeing PR hits it twice, I told you we'd give that a name. That is called a secant. Okay, and it is in your notes there. So basically, I, you can look at them that way if you want, but I look at it this way. Where are those two hitting each other? Is it in the circle, on the circle, or outside the circle? Where are the two segments hitting each other? On. See, there's my three options. On, in, out. Those are the three options. Those are hitting on. Well, okay. Well, let's look at it this way then. All you have to do for that is let's figure out whatever this arc is. And to figure out that angle, all you have to do is take half. For example, let's say this RP actually was a diameter. That would make this 180 degrees for that arc, correct? So then what's that angle over there? It's 90, yeah. I think Chris was just making sure everybody was awake this morning. You know. Now, realize, does it have to be right there, though? Or could it possibly be like that? Is it still? hitting on the circle. So technically, is it still a secant and a tangent? Yes, it is, blah, blah. But it's hitting on the circle. So all you have to do, now the nice thing is, is it actually works the other way too. Okay, so I didn't move P, sorry about that. There, how's that feel, better? Okay, so I could do it the other way too. Well, that's obviously more than 180, right? It's gonna have to wait. So if that's more than 180, well, how much are we talking about, you think? Maybe 300? If it's still hitting on there, what's that angle? 150. Okay. Now, seeing this is the first one I do, this is the one most people forget. So if it's on the circle, it's just going to be half. Does it matter where that angle ends up? No, just figure that out. It's half. That's all you got to do. Okay, so that's option one, is hitting on the circle. They hit each other outside. Isn't it, again, a tangent and a secant, though? It is. Which one's the tangent? DG, okay, which one then? A lot of ways you can name this one, but which one's the secant? DF, EF, any of them, right? But they are hitting outside the circle, agreed? They are hitting over here at point D, right? So what you do here, do you kind of look at that angle almost as like a, a Pac-Man? It's eating part of the circle, correct? It is eating, though, two parts of the circle. It is eating that part and that part. Agreed? Right? Well, if you want to figure out this angle, because that's what today is all about, is figuring out these angles. Right? Tomorrow is going to be very similar, or actually Monday is going to be very similar, but it's not going to be about angles. It's going to be about the segments. So here today is angles. All you have to do is take the far arc, and if I'm talking about this angle right here, which of the two arcs, the green one or the red one, is furthest away? The green one, and don't you agree it's also bigger? You will then subtract the closer one, which in this case is obviously the red one. If you would like an example, I can definitely give you one. Maybe uh, 140. Yeah, and then you subtract and then take half. And this one's a lot smaller, right? Because I'm looking, you see how I'm doing the central angle here, kind of when I'm looking at that? What would you say? Maybe. Maybe a little more. Let's go, I don't know, 60. We'll keep it a nice number, though, so that when we take half, we're good. So that angle right there, what you're going to do is take 140 minus 60. You're going to figure out that number and then take half. Okay? So you do 140 minus 60 is... Now, why did I do that first? Because order of operations tells you to do inside parentheses, right? So that is, what, 80 and then times a half is... So that angle right there, guess what? It's 40. Now, again, they have five options, right? I'm still going with my three. I think my three are good. The first one is they hit on. We dealt with that one, right? This one is they hit outside. Coincidentally, which one's next? They hit inside. 
I think, well, then, are either of these tangents then? No, they both technically would be called what? Secants, right? Uh, or if you just said kind of line segment TM, it'd just be a chord, right? If you do line TM, it's a secant. Well, here's what I see. I see here's an angle one, right? I see another angle up here that's got to be the same. Yeah, that's the one over here, right? Because what type of angles are those? Oh, that thing I told you was never going to go away. Vertical angle. But do you agree that these two angles, then, yeah, they're the same, but doesn't it create basically that one over there in this case? And it also creates this one over here because they cross and keep going. Don't they still create both two of them? But they definitely hit it inside. Well, one could be bigger, one could be smaller. We don't really know necessarily, depending on the problem. But if you want to find it, if you look at the rule there, it says to take the two and add them together and then divide by two. So again, let's make one up. So if this was central, I don't know, 70, fine, that's fine. Uh, this one here, maybe uh, 50. That's a really bad five. There we go. 50. And so to find really either one of these angles, you would then take 50. Does it matter which one you put first then if you're adding? No. 50 plus 70 and then take half. Well, that's 120 again because order of operations tells us to take half. So this angle right here is 60 and so is that one. Could I technically in this problem have given you the 70, given you the 50 and asked you for where I just put the green dot? Could I, would you have to solve for something first though? Yeah, you'd have to solve for the 60 first because obviously what is where I put the green dot is? How much? It's 120. Why is it 120? Because these two added to 120? Is that why it is? Not necessarily because it's a linear pair, right? Okay, another thing I told you to not forget. Right? So now that you've seen the three options, how come they have five? Well, let's find out. Well, how is this different from that one? Okay, according to my rules, isn't it hitting outside? But yeah, it is slightly different because this was a tangent and a secant in this problem, correct? But it is still hitting outside, right? Is this one still hitting outside? But it happens to be two secants. Look at the work. Does it even matter? Do you do anything different than we did in the other one? No. So why give it five options when you should just look, hit in, on, or out? So this is being outside. So red, blue, do you agree those are the two that that angle's creating? Well, I'm going to give you some numbers and you figure it out right now. Yeah, what do we think here? 100. And not much, right? Maybe 20 sounds good. So find angle... I guess we could call it angle BAR if you want. You know, that would be a good enough. Just saying that angle A is not good enough because it could be too many angles in there, all right? Uh, but angle BAR is something you should be able to calculate if you follow my suggestions. My suggestion is this hits outside, right? Not on, not in. So take the furthest one, which is 100 minus 20, and take half. So it's half of? 80 is 40. Now, are all the answers going to end up real nice like I have today so far? I had them going for you? No. All right. But really, this isn't that bad. Right? But you might want to, off to the side, write my three options in, on, out, or something like that to remind yourself so you don't have to look through all five. So this one right here, well, it's hitting outside, isn't it? So why does this book consider this a different problem? Two tangents. Is that different from the previous two? Technically, yes. Is it going to stop what you're doing? No. But the nice thing about two tangents is you know that that arc there plus that arc there, you know how much that's going to be. You know it's going to be 360 in the end. So couldn't they technically just give you one of them and have you figure out this angle over here? Yeah, because then you could figure out that's 360 minus whatever, or you could figure it out many different ways and then figure the angle. So this one, they could give you a little bit less information, but you should, you should still be able to do it. I think we got time for another one. Oh, look at that. Well, of course, one thing that they could do differently is maybe not exactly give you the information you need. And of course, they could throw in more information. So in this one, uh, what is the question that I put in this one? Measure of angle Q? All right, so over here, that is in question. We would like to know that. 
30 is BC. Yeah, good question. 30 would be that arc right there. Well, it is two secants, correct? If you look at AQ and QD are two secants, but really look at this way. They are hitting each other outside the circle, correct? Those two are? That one and that one are hitting outside, correct? So you're supposed to take far arc minus closest arc and take half. Most common forgotten thing is to take half. All right. Well, they don't tell me that one over there where I just put the blue dot. Yeah, but I have almost everything else. And the total's got to be 360, right? So we've got 160 used here, 30 used right there, 120 used there. Actually, quite a bit's been used up, right? Because we're talking about, what, 280, 310 already used up. Is that right? Did I do the math correctly? If 310's already been used up, how much is left over? So is this drawn to scale? No, not really. But that's okay. They don't have to be. Now, the reason you always take far arc minus close arc in these cases is the far arc better be the bigger of the two. All right. So the far arc is 50 minus 30. And of course, do not forget to take half. So it's half of 20 is 10. Now, here's the reason some people forget. If you forgot to take half, would 20 at least be a reasonable answer for that angle over there? Yeah, it wouldn't be like, whoa, that can't possibly be right. So that's one of the things that you might want to make a note for yourself. Because didn't every single one of the ones we did on the other side of the notes, didn't we take half? Every single time. So maybe make a note that that is truly important.